Bruno Piva Jr. was a 52-year-old man, a businessman, a loving father to a daughter, and a man with many friends. Bruno has always been a dedicated and caring father to his daughter. They were true partners. He has always been someone concerned about friends and family, said a friend and lawyer of Bruno's. He was married to Karina de Freitas Fagolan, a 41-year-old woman, young and beautiful, from a well-off background, a dentist lieutenant in the army, who also had two children from a previous relationship, one aged 13 and the other 7. To outsiders, the couple seemed to lead a perfect life. However, the truth was that the brief relationship between Bruno and Karina would become the reason for his life's end only five months after their marriage. Today, we will talk about the unforgivable case of Bruno Piva and Karina Fogolan. They met online in 2021, had a few dates, and soon Karina moved in with Bruno and his daughter at his home in Praia Grande, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Just two months later, they formally married in a quick ceremony, to which not even Bruno's mother was invited. They seemed deeply in love, frequently declaring their affection for each other on social media. A close friend of Bruno revealed that he believed he had found the woman of his life and asserted this to everyone. However, close friends noticed that the relationship was troubled, with intense jealousy from Karina. According to these close friends, Bruno had complained several times about Karina's fluctuating mood, saying that one minute she was happy and loving, and the next, she was nervous, angry, and violent, even assaulting him on a few occasions. Her jealousy was also extreme. She once recorded a video for one of Bruno's ex-girlfriends, telling her to stay away from him and leave the couple in peace. She constantly checked Bruno's phone and social media to ensure he wasn't talking to other women, tracked his phone when he left home without her, and had arguments with him in public due to jealousy, accusing him of looking at other women. Nevertheless, Bruno appeared happy in the relationship. He regularly expressed his love for his wife through social media posts. In numerous photos with his partner, he emphasized that she was the love of his life and that days were happier by her side. However, the relationship would come to a tragic end in December 2021, just five months after their wedding. On December 3, 2021, according to Bruno's closest friends, he had decided to separate from Karina due to her possessive jealousy and violence. They began arguing around 6.30 p.m. at home when he informed her that he was leaving with his daughter. He started packing their bags into the car, and the argument extended to the sidewalk outside their home. Bruno had parked the car in front of the garage to load his and his daughter's luggage. During the argument, captured by a neighbor's security camera, Bruno insisted that Karina leave the car and even tried to pull her out by the arm. His daughter was present and witnessed everything. At one point, while Bruno was on the phone, pacing back and forth, Karina exited the car and continued the argument. When Bruno turned away from her, she drew her Taurus 7.65 caliber pistol concealed in her waistband and fired two shots at Bruno. Startled, sat on the ground. Afterward, Karina went inside, threw the gun under another car in the garage, and returned outside, pretending to assist her husband. They, along with Bruno's daughter, got into the car to go to the hospital. However, Karina pretended not to know where the car keys were and exited the vehicle again, shouting for help from neighbors. Bruno remained at the scene without medical attention for about 20 minutes until the police, alerted by neighbors, finally arrived. Under pressure, Karina claimed she had found the car keys, and Bruno was finally taken to the hospital. Karina told the police that Bruno had been a victim of a robbery attempt and that the man who had shot him had fled the scene immediately afterward. However, Bruno's daughter and other neighbors had seen everything that had actually occurred. Thus, Karina was arrested on the spot. 
She admitted to the crime but attempted to justify it in her statement, claiming she suffered abuse from her husband and that he was diverting her money. Nevertheless, she hadn't filed a police report against him because she hoped he would change. However, the victim's friends and family stated that Bruno always had a favorable financial situation and didn't depend on his wife's money, rendering her version senseless. Additionally, they also mentioned that Bruno was always someone who deeply respected women, denying the idea that he was abusive towards Karina. In fact, it was he who frequently complained about being assaulted by her. The police also obtained security camera footage that captured the entire crime, clearly showing that Bruno was shot in the back while on the phone. Confused, he sat on the sidewalk, already injured, while his daughter, who was also present and witnessed everything, became distraught. The wife went into the house's garage, seemingly indifferent to what had happened. After a while, she emerged to attend to him as if nothing had occurred. During searches at the couple's house, the police found the murder weapon under another car in the garage and concluded that Karina had swiftly entered the house after the crime solely to try to hide the weapon. Bruno was hit in the hand and neck area, and the projectile lodged in his chest. Throughout his hospitalization, he remained in critical condition. He was mostly unconscious, although he showed slight improvement in his last days, occasionally opening his eyes. However, after more than 50 days hospitalized, unfortunately, Bruno could not survive. Despite being caught in the act, Karina was granted the privilege of being released to await trial under house arrest only 10 days after the crime. According to authorities, she received this benefit because she has two underage children who require her care. She was indicted for homicide, which can be classified as either simple homicide, with a sentence of 6 to 20 years of imprisonment, or qualified homicide, with a sentence of 12 to 30 years in prison, according to Brazilian laws. Bruno's 11-year-old daughter is from a previous relationship. Her mother had passed away about a year before Bruno started a relationship with Karina, so the girl's custody is now under the responsibility of her maternal grandmother. Family and friends of Bruno remain distressed, demanding justice, as to this day, over a year after the crime, Karina continues to live freely without facing any consequences for cruelly taking the life of an innocent man for no apparent reason other than not accepting the end of the relationship. Leave your opinion on this case in the comments, subscribe to the channel to discover more stories like this and don't forget to leave a like. See you in the next video.